Good morning. This is a story about Orlando Letalier and Ronnie Moffat. They were driving to work to IPS, International Policy Studies, a, a liberal think tank, a very good one in, in Washington, D.C. They were coming down Massachusetts Avenue around Sheridan Square, and a bomb went off and um, was under their seats. And it essentially blew their legs off, and they bled to death and very quickly. Um, Ronnie Moffat's husband was in the back seat, and he survived it. He, uh, I think he's still alive today, thank God. Um, but Ronnie died, and Latalier died. Latalier had been one of the top ministers in the Allende government um, in, in Chile that had been overturned. And so he came to the United States, one, to protect himself, two, to keep doing what he did, he, which, which he liked was diplomacy and, uh, you know, working on nonviolent things around the world. And as they, as they went around that circle there, on about halfway around it, that bomb went off, and their car just sort of dragged over to the side of, of the road. Um, and there's not much they could do for them because they bled to death so quickly because their legs were gone. And, um, and so the town rallied, primarily the Chilean people uh, in town, but also, you know, we, we couldn't figure out why someone would do this to these wonderful people who were on their way to work. And as a volunteer in the funeral, at the funeral, on the day of the funeral, and for some reason they stationed me, you know, to be a volunteer and get the crowd, keep it moving. Um, and I was stationed at where, the, where they had been killed, where they actually died at, at the car wreck. And um, so I got time. I was probably there 45 minutes, half an hour, I don't know. And I got to just sort of look around and it was all embassies. I don't know whether the Chilean embassy is there, but I figured one of these embassies, there, uh, there was a radio contact that make that bomb explode from one of these institutions. And I thought, you know, these people, if we let them get away with this, they could kill all of us dissidents in the world all in one day. Right? They really, you know, we're sick of these people talking and calling for freedom and democracy. Um, and kill them the way they killed Latalier and Moffat. And so in my little Irish head, I decided I'm going to get revenge one day on this. Um, I'm, going to, I'm going to somehow, in my life, I'm going to do something about this, this execution here in my hometown of Washington, D.C., that some government has the damn nerve to come here and kill one of their own and, and let them get away with it. And so that, that instilled in me a certain love of, and respect for uh, Chile that I didn't have yet. I, had, I wasn't appointed the Peace Corps yet. I hadn't gone you know, abroad to do that job. Um, but it, it settled into me a, um, a sense of it's time for accountability for these, for these wrongs. There needs to be accountability. And so as you examine the abuses of human rights abuse, it's not only we have to rebuild those who survive this damage, we also have to prosecute those who do it and get them in jail. And that seldomly happens. It's, it's mostly we deal with trying to recuperate the damage, but the really bringing those who offended people and caused human rights abuses, they don't go to jail. And so I was looking for that equation to balance out, and I'd work on, on that side of it. And I, and I think the, in human rights, we look at two things. One is the debasement side of it, you know, the torture, the disappearances, the, the terrible things they do to people. Uh, on the other hand, there is the aspiration of freedom and hope uh, of what human rights offer us. But what people don't understand is in the human rights degradation side, that's a battle of governments against their own people. It's a battle every day against their own people. And aspiration comes along rarely. And that's why I did the world tour eventually. Uh, it was in honor of those two people um, that, that, that would celebrate music because music is the magical newspaper of the world. You got to use that as simple and as naive as that is. 
you have to be able to use the artist in the world, poetry, uh, anything, you know, the guitarist hunts for the perfect riff, the poet hunts for the perfect word, the, you know, a great writer looks for a great paragraph. Well, we human rights people have the right to look for a perfect world where governments don't abuse us and they work for us. And I think that's an important thing for people to remember. And at Amnesty, I, I took it to music, I took it to dance, I took it to photography, I took it to the arts of the world. So there's an aspirational quality to what we're doing, not just the degradation and explaining of how people get hurt. And what I'd like to do today is remind the human rights movement, as well as everybody who's going to watch this show, that we have to do both sides of it, the aspirational side so there's hope, and also then deal with the data, chase the, pro the offenders, and take care of the survivors of human rights abuse. And we can't forget all elements of the human rights movement. Thank you. <clears throat>